Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Manuel Godoy, and we are here for a status update on the next competition and investment round. So I'm kind of keeping this hush hush. I ain't trying to put the word out there right now about the next investment round. But for you patrons, I might as well tell you about it, right? I might as well. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that echo. So um, first of all, what's up, everybody? How's the competition been going? If you're one of the writers in the competition, how has it been going? You only got a couple days left. I think you got four days left to submit your um, your submissions. So pretty excited about that. You know, like that's a pretty big deal to be able to read all that content. It's going to be a lot of content I have to read, you know, and I'm pretty excited about that. I want to see what you got. I want to see what these creators got, you know. Uh, so this session right here, you know, I'm not giving any new information about the competition, right? I've already given that. Uh, so this time I am I'm simply allowing questions. So if you're one person in the competition and you have a question, all right, go ahead and put it in the comment section. I'll pull it up and I'll answer your question. And later on, I say about 15 minutes from now, uh, I'll start answering questions about the next investment round. So I'll do a brief conversation about what's going to happen in the next investment round. And then I'll take questions on the next investment round. All right. So uh, first of all, if you got any questions at all about the writing competition, please put them in the comment section. Uh, a couple of questions that I've seen people uh, make were like, could they name characters that I didn't name? And the answer is yes, across the board, all right? Yes, across the board, you can name characters if I didn't name them, all right? If you want to, if you want to put somebody's brother in there, and I mentioned their brother, but I didn't put a name on them, you can put a name on them. That's not a problem for me. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be upset about that at all. All right. So that, that's one that we're definitely going to allow. Feel free to do that. It shouldn't stop you from writing, regardless if you have their name or not. You should have wrote the whole thing, and then you just switch it out the name if you feel like it. But that's going to be pretty good. Uh, for submitting the file, do you need a cover sheet? Uh, no. That was your first, the first round submission was your cover sheet. So the here's the question, right? For submitting the file, do you need a cover sheet for your story? And the answer is absolutely not, because the first round was your cover sheet. You're basically telling me how you're going to write your character, what your motivations were, how you saw the character already. So I don't need background on why you wrote the story, right? You already told me in the first round. So now in the second round, I'm simply reading about what you decide to do with the character based off of what we were, what we submitted to you. Slightly over five pages is fine. All right. Ten pages is an automatic fail. <laughs> I am not willing to let it go more than than five than than five and a half pages. I'm just not going to read that many pages. So if you go on past page six, cut stuff. And, and me personally, this is a big this is a big deal when it comes to writers is, you know, you have to know how to cut stuff, not just write stuff, but also cut stuff. You got to be able to tell the story in the frame from which it's done. I've seen a lot of people write a whole bunch of stuff and say nothing. Like they just write pages and pages and pages and nothing has advanced at all because they're not really adding any information that's relevant. So you shouldn't go too far over five pages, especially with the amount of work I've given you. I didn't give you a massive amount of content you have to write about. I gave you one scenario, right? So it's not like I gave you over five pages worth of content to write about. It's a very small snapshot. So please don't go over, you know, six pages and even six pages is a lot. Don't try to make the font super small, right? I told you a font. So don't try to make it super small in order to fit in to five pages. That's that's the same exact effect. It's going to make me read damn near novel. So, so, so let's get that right. Uh, 
Uh, should we follow proper formatting? I don't really care about page number. Page number doesn't matter to me. That's that's not something I put in the, in the in the information either. You know, just the proper font, font, proper spacing, right? Proper font, proper spacing, and proper text size. That's the things that I did. Um, I did right. So focus on that. Any tips? Uh, this seems more like a general question, not necessarily a question about the um, the writing competition. So I'm going to hold on to this one. All right, ask it again later on when I go into more general questions. Garai would be a better POV character. Well, the thing about it is this, right? If you win the character, so if you win. The main character, right? And Garai is part of that main character story, then yes, you do get to write parts of the story from Garai's perspective, right? So there you go. You do get to write Garai's character too, because they're part of that storyline. So take it for what it's worth. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, the outlines you gave, uh, will those be a part of the, the actual project once winners are announced? Nope. Nope. It was it was stuff made specifically for this competition. Now, there might be similar events that we'll have in the main storyline, right? But the very, the exact thing that I gave out in round two? No. No. It was It was made specifically for this competition. Uh, are we taking any new submissions? No, we're not. We're not. This competition has been going on for about two months now. So, yeah, we're not going to be taking any more submissions for now. Right? We'll see what kind of new projects we have in the future. But as of right now, it's pretty much a wrap. It's pretty much a wrap. Uh, when will the winners be announced? Probably February. Beginning of February, most likely. That's when we'll have the new, uh, the new winners. Writing a story about history before slavery. There you go. Uh, is the Ampho story allowed to write the, um, from Sarkati's representative's uh, POV? No. There's no reason to. Not your character, right? So even though it's the representative, right, you shouldn't get into their head too much. So here's the, here's the idea of what I like to see. Well, this whole story is going to be written in third-person perspective. And we're not going to have God's eye. So we're not going to be able to literally get into people's heads, right, when we're writing this story, which means that you're going to have to convey things by actually showing it, right? You won't be able to say, I don't know what I should do in this moment. He's trying to bluff me. Maybe I should do that. Instead, explain their, fa their facial expressions. Maybe when the conversation is over, they talk about why they made the decisions they made in the room previously right but don't go into their heads because you know there's a lot of different perspectives that are going to be brought into this right because there's so many different writers five different writers that it's best that everybody stays in in third person you know perspective right if everybody stays you know on on basically a bird's eye view of everything then it'll be a lot better narratively right with less contradictions you saw what happened right as opposed to oh they were thinking something else right that didn't really happen the way we see it if you see their actions all the time then their actions will easily be able to be uh copied in the future right like i i know what your character will do if this happens because i see how their character reacts every time All right. Any more questions about the competition? Once once we're done with the questions about the competition, 
I'm going to move on to the future investment round, right? Because we got another investment round coming uh, around May. May is when we're going to do another investment round. It's going to be pretty dope, right? It's finally going. We're finally going to open back up Black Sands Entertainment for investments, the actual parent company. So it's going to be pretty lit. Uh, can we add supplemental information? Uh, not in this competition. In this competition, you're going to be doing five pages. If you, if any of the characters in those five pages needs a whole background check, then you're probably going to fail. All right. We don't need no character sheets. We don't need no grand explanation. If you can't explain it directly in the page, you can't tell a short story. So. Keep it on the page. Will submission a little under five pages be acceptable? Yep. Yep. If you did it in three pages, but it was a hell of a, a good three pages, more power to you. More power to you. That don't matter to me. Right? Going over is the problem. Going under, I could care less about. Right? Because you still, you still told a pretty dynamic story over a long period of time. So, you know, I could care less if it's four pages, three pages, right? So long as it's a strong narrative and you've totally comp and you conquered the, the goal, you conquered what I wanted to be presented into this, and you made it your own, great, right? But you see, I get more strict in my judgment when I'm reading page seven. When I'm reading page seven, I'm thinking, I would have cut this, I would have cut that. This is stupid. I start I start really thinking of things I should freaking I would have totally like ripped out of the, the whole story. Right. I, I'd be like, man, it's a lot of wasted time and effort writing all this extra stuff. I'm being more critical. The further I go, the more critical I get. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, if I'm like, hey, I'm satisfied. Three pages was dope. Four pages was dope. That was strong. I'm good. I'm not going to nitpick it to death because at the end of the day, I'm not asking you to write entire novels. I'm not asking you to write chapters that are about 10,000 words each chapter, right? So this is like your entire segment is like 10,000 words. So you're not going to get a massive amount of uh, uh, work or whatever. I don't even think it's 10,000. I think it might be 5,000 words, 5,000 words per per chapter, you know? So I don't, you said, so I really need to be able to get people who can just finish the assignment and not, oh, I missed it by 15 pages. Uh, I got the story done, sir, but, you know, I went over 15 pages. Are we allowed to give our characters pets? I mean, you could. Is there a point? Because I can tell you right now, there's almost no point. You know, maybe there's a point. In future chapters, I mean, like, like, like if you get the character, maybe when you're getting those 30 page assignments, you make pets, right? But in a five page assignment with the scenario already written, you know, making pets just shows me that you can't stick to the to the assignment. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm talking about how two military powers are about to fight, and you say, hey, uh, can I add a, 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 a marriage and how the marriage is currently not going well? I'll be like, why are you focusing on that? I'm, I'm trying to talk about this war that's about to happen. Why are we bringing up other characters? <laughs> you know, so me personally, I wouldn't distract myself with, with superficial stuff that isn't relevant to the assignment, you know? And then later on, when I ask you to make an entire world for the character, right? If you want to add a pet, I guess you can, right? But is it relevant? Mm. Having an event leading to the main story, that okay? I have no clue what you're talking about because I already wrote all the events for the competition. So I don't know what you mean. 
having an event leading to the main story, is that okay? Like I said, I have no clue what that means. I have no clue what that means. Stick to the assignment. So if you want to go and try to connect the dots to something that I didn't connect the dots to, that's on you. But if it don't land well, right, that might be the sole reason why your submission failed. Very risky play. At the end of the day, this is kind of a creative assignment. So it is kind of a creative assignment. But it's also a commission. You can pay $500 per chapter. So I need you to finish the assignment. That's number one goal. Not to write the story for me. Not to, not to, not to make new paths or whatever. If I tell you it connects, it connects. All right? But if I don't say anything about it connecting, don't be like, I'm going to make it connect. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna make this connect now. Like, like I didn't say anything about it connecting. I would, if it was, I'd be like, hey, just let you know at the end of this chapter, you're gonna run into what's his name, and this is gonna cause a joint chapter with that with that character as well. Right, so be prepared for that. But I, but I wouldn't. But if I don't say it, it don't exist. Uh, you said we we're doing an event in Harlem. Yep. Yep, that's going to happen. That is going to happen. So that happens in May. I believe in May. May 7th or something like that. Uh, will future writing competitions be stories within the world of Black Sands or for new properties? Uh, I am not taking any more new properties. 2023 is a year of Black Sands. So Black Sands... And maybe a couple of the um, the titles that we've published in the past will continue to get funding, right? But the reality is this, right? Some titles were good. Some titles actually hit and sold plenty of copies to the point where I'm almost making my money back, right? So I can invest in the future. And eventually, they're going to have that tipping point where I'll actually make money off of them. And a lot of titles didn't. A lot of titles ends up not selling enough copies for me to keep it going. So a lot of properties are going to basically have a hardcover and they're never going to be done again. And that's just the way it is. You know, they'll exist, but we're not going to continue to produ produce them. So in 2023 and beyond, we're going to be focusing on the winners, the breadwinners, the people who are making the money for the company, right? Because the company can't do anything. The company can't create anything uh, if we don't have a positive ink, um, flow of cash. You know what I mean? So uh, we went hard the last two years investing in other people's properties. Some worked out. A lot did it. Right. And this year we're going to be going very narrow and very tall. Let's see what else. Mm. You new here? This is one of those questions that I wonder if you're new here, like you've never you've never seen me before. If you've never seen me before, then I guess this question is relevant. But if you have seen me before, then I don't think I need to answer this. Uh, since you mentioned investment, yeah, I think it's time we start talking about the, the uh, investment round. So uh, let's stop the questions about the competition. I think I've covered most of them. I think I've covered most of the questions in the competition. So now let's talk about the future investment round. Now, remember, all the information that I'm giving right now, for the most part, most of this information is subject to change, right? Subject to change. It might change. It might completely cancel. Who knows, right? So it's subject to change. But the way we currently have it right now is most likely we're going to do an investment round uh, for straight equity in Black Sands Entertainment, the parent company of all the properties you've ever seen. Right. So we haven't had one since 2020. We haven't had an investment round since 2020 
for Black Sands Entertainment. So a lot of people have really been bugging the hell out of me to try to get into that investment round. So most likely that's going to happen in May, right? And the reason is we're probably going to try to coordinate between um, the investment round and the convention that we're going to have. So we have an investor co um, convention uh, or, you know, basically it's, it's, a, it's a meeting for investors, right? So in the last two rounds of Black Sand Entertainment, a lot of bigger investors, the people who paid like over $1,000 or $5,000, I forgot what the rules were at the time, but I'm going to go back through them. They had basically VIP tickets for life, right? They had VIP tickets for life for all the conventions that we were going to have in the future, right? And we're going to make sure that at least we're going to have 300 tickets given to them. Now, we don't know if, if, uh, if they're going to be 300 of those investors capable of going. So there might be a couple, maybe 100 tickets or so that can be sold to the public right? Can be sold to our customers and fans, people who haven't actually invested yet, right? So um, that's going to be available as well. But this convention is going to be at the um, Schomburg, the Schomburg Center in Harlem, New York. It's probably going to be on May 7th, right? And it's going to be an all-day thing. We're probably going to be going from 12 to 4 with a whole bunch of panels, you're going to meet a lot of the creators under the Black Sands Entertainment, including myself, my wife, uh, other teams, King Lion, all them people. They're all going to be there. They're all going to be there. And, you know, it's going to be a really awesome experience. We'll have some panels where we'll be talking directly about the future plans of Black Sands, Q&A, you know, what we need to do together. We're going to actually launch the campaign during that round. I mean, during that convention. So you can see the number go up. The number going up is one of the most exciting things in the world. Like when you see it live, when you see the when you, when you press the start button and and you see the number go go up by like ten thousand dollars every single minute, it just goes up 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That stuff is exciting as hell. So being able to actually sit in an auditorium, all right, with a big giant project, uh, a big screen. Right. And watching the numbers go up together, it's probably going to be one of the most exciting moments of your life. Right. And that's going to be an exclusive opportunity for our investors, our patrons and our future investors. Right. So we have a small capacity. I think we have like maybe 350 people capacity. Right. I ain't trying to make no giant event. There's going to be a lot of sensitive information given out. Right. A lot of behind the scenes information for our investors. Right. So this is more of a, a private get together where you can meet everybody in the company. You can meet the creators. You get to actually ask hard questions, real hard questions. Right. We're not going to beat around the bush. And it's going to be it's going to be pretty lit. It's going to be pretty lit. Uh, as far as any numbers, like how much are you going to raise? What's the valuation? Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. I ain't answering that today because that's extremely subject to change. So. So all I'm answering today is like maybe logistical questions and stuff like that. Now, um, let's go to those questions. Uh, all right. So um, first of all, uh, if you have any questions about any of the stuff going on with the investment round, please let me know. Oh, yeah. By the way, as I said before, patrons will always get the first investment. So if you're a patron, if you're an active patron with a subscription, or if you're a previous investor, you will be the first ones to invest in the company, just the way it is. It's always been that way, and it will be that way this time around. Now, the big difference is most likely, you're probably going to be the only people who are going to get that 10% discount. I almost always give a 10% discount on the first 500,000 raised, right? So you'll be able to get an exclusive discount because you're a patron, right? So that's pretty important. Make sure to sign up if you haven't. You know, patreon.com slash black sands. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be pretty cool. I mean, 10% discounts big, especially if you're a big investor, right? If you're a big investor, you know, I've seen people who invested like $15,000. That means they got $1,500 in free stock. They just got extra stock, $1,500. Because 10% is 10%, period. 
you know, and, you know, I think it's pretty cool, man. I think it's pretty cool. We've done it for years. We'll do it again. Any new questions? Uh, no, not really. It don't matter to me. I mean, come on. I've been dealing with Egyptians for like freaking five years now. So it's nothing new to me. It might be new to him, but it's nothing new to me, right? They've been coming to my comment section talking about stealing culture for like for years, right? So it's boring to me. It makes me laugh kind of. Is it too late to invest? No, there's going to be investment around probably in May. So you're on time. You're on time. You're on time. Uh, where do I find the competition? Well, you can't. Well, it don't matter. You can't be a part of it now. We're in the last three days of a two of a two month process. So, if you were if you didn't make it in the first round, then you have no way of getting into the second round. The second round is about to close. Now, anything else? Where will you go to invest? Most likely WeFunder.com, the same place we've done our last couple of investment rounds. Is book 13 coming soon? Digitally, yes. Physically, hmm. That's gonna be a while. Physicals are gonna be a while. So this is this is the this is the print run that I have coming to me. Uh, once issue thirteen is colored, right? Once issue thirteen is, is colored, we're going to uh, print issue twelve and issue thirteen. We're only gonna print about five hundred copies of that, right? So we're gonna print about five hundred copies of issue twelve, issue thirteen. It's only for the collectors. Right. And then we're going to print about 3000 copies of Ultimate Volume 4. So Ultimate Volume 4 will be done with 11, 12 and 13 combined. Right. And that's going to be the next hardcover. And then finally, the last hardcover will be 14 through 16, although it's kind of a tight window. Right. So I might push it. I might make it 17, cha um, 17 chapters long for the finale. Yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling like I feel like I don't have an, I don't have enough pages to work with to finish the story. Right. I don't want the big bad guy to only last like a chapter. Right. I kind of I kind of want it to be like a two chapter thing. So I might have to do chapter 17. I don't know. When is the convention in Harlem? May 7th, most likely, most likely May 7th. Uh, what is the advice I have for new comic book characters? The reality, I think, I think I did a whole episode on that. I think I did a whole episode on um, my podcast, which, by the way, is starting back up this week. So this week, we're actually starting up the podcast competition again. That's pretty cool, right? So we're gonna have we have podcasts and all that stuff is coming back this year. The podcast is gonna be focusing on uh, creators, right? So we're gonna be interviewing a lot of creators in this space, right? And get their perspective on things. It's gonna be cool little interviews, a whole bunch of interviews. The Harlem Convention is the investor convention. Or investor summit. I think it should be better to be called an investor summit. That's what it is. It's basically a get together for all the investors to come and talk about the state of the company, what's going on, meet the creators, meet all the people who are signed under the company, right? And ask the tough questions. So it's a pretty cool thing. We're going to ask that everybody leave their kids at home, right? For this one, maybe next year we'll have a venue big enough for, for the kids as well. Right. 
But this one's going to be a one day, come out to New York, one day event, right? And it's going to be adults only just because we just don't have the venue space, right? We don't have the venue space. So we're looking at 300 able-bodied adults in the building. That's That should be like stretching it pretty good. It's one day, one day on a Sunday. No, Muntu Warriors is doing great. Muntu Warriors is actually doing great. So don't worry about that. Muntu Warriors has done very well so far. Very well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for supporting our company. Hope to see those competition submissions coming in as much as possible. I had a lot of people who made it into the second round. Uh, I haven't got that many emails yet. So everybody's waiting to the last second to submit. So uh, make sure you get it in there, man. I want to have at least 50% of all the people who are assigned to chapter uh, to, to part two to complete their submission, right? That way I have a good uh, segment to actually review, right? I don't want I don't want to have like one or two writers, you know, on a character because if that happens, and I don't think both writers were good enough, right? Then the character doesn't get a writer, and that would suck, right? Character is not getting writers, so so make sure everybody apply. That way, I have a nice pool of it, of people to look at, and that could be like, yeah, this guy got it, this girl got it, you know, that'd be good. Monarchs hasn't launched yet. Monarchs hasn't launched yet, so they ain't doing nothing yet. We, we've, been, we've been recoloring everything, but hopefully uh, we'll get it launched in April. I hope April is the, t is the time when we actually get it done, hopefully. <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all later. Peace.